Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast isn't legal advice, but I will tell you that nothing will prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. This episode's topic is UNAM, and UNAM, much like other disability carriers, has a history of arbitrarily denying disability claims. If you've got a policy through UNAM, this is the episode for you, because this will give you insight as to the games that UNAM will play with various types of claim. And I'm going to be telling you about four stories that I think illustrate the games that UNAM play. But if you don't have a UNAM disability policy, don't tune out. These are also games that other disability carriers will play. It's in the Disability Carrier Denial uh, Handbook. First, I'm going to start with talking about the five reasons that Unum used to justify denying a long-term disability claim by an emergency room physician with breast cancer. Second, I'm going to talk about how the lack of diagnosis and the ability to work in other medical facilities doomed an urgent care physician's claim for UNAM disability benefits based on multiple chemical sensitivity. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about a vertebral compression fracture and wedging claim that was denied by UNAM and ultimately overturned by a federal judge. And last, I'm going to talk about UNAM's claim that a policyholder's back pain was out of proportion to evidence of radiculopathy on exam was reversed by a federal judge. Let's take a break for a moment before we get into this exciting episode about UNAM. Have you been robbed of your peace of mind from your disability insurance carrier? You owe it to yourself to get a copy of Robbed of Your Peace of Mind, which provides you with everything you need to know about the long-term disability claim process. Request your free copy of the book at kvlaw.com today. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. You ready to get started? I'm first going to talk about the five reasons that Unum used to justify denying a long-term disability claim by an emergency room physician with breast cancer. Emergency room physicians are on the front line every day, dealing with at a high level of cognitive, emotional, and physical demands. So what does a disability carrier like Unum do when the policyholder is diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer? Often, Unum will wrongfully deny a claim and force a physician into stressful and needless litigation. And it doesn't have to be a physician. They don't seem to have a lot of sympathy with breast cancer claims. And that's what happened in the case of Kaiserman versus Unum Life. Now, Dr. Kaiserman, who was in the state of Washington, was an emergency room physician at Harborview Medical Center. She was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. There's a 27% survival rate at five years. The cancer had metastasized to her liver and to her ribs. She took a full year of medical leave and she underwent chemotherapy, a lumpectomy, hormone treatment, and even a liver ablation. A year later, with the approval of her oncologist, Dr. Kaiserman returned to work in the emergency room with, on a 50% schedule with no night shifts. I think that was amazing. Now, Unum paid a year of residual disability benefits based on her reduced hours and then terminated her benefits saying, you can now work full time. So what were the five reasons that Unum gave to justify this claims denial? I find that they often will create reasons to justify claims denial, and this case is no exception. So Unum first said that your emergency room physician job is a light duty job. Secondly, they said that the treating oncologist improperly created reasons to restrict Dr. Kaiserman to part-time work after the, after the denial, notwithstanding the fact that Unum had accepted the part-time restrictions assigned by the treating physician and had paid Dr. Kaiserman residual benefits. Talk about talking out, out, about out of both sides of your mouth. Number three, Unum improperly argued that exercising, doing yoga or vacationing with her family was inconsistent with her complaints of fatigue. Unum improperly ignored the known side effects of treatment. And lastly, Unum ignored the obvious immunological issues that arise with working in an emergency room setting, and certainly in the age of COVID. 
Fortunately, the federal judge threw out all these bogus reasons and found that Dr. Kaiserman was entitled to her UNAM benefits. But let's talk about the lessons that were learned in this case. And I think there are five lessons that were learned. First, it's not uncommon for disability carriers, including UNAM, to misclassify or mischaracterize your occupation. So don't be afraid to challenge that. Now, that will require that you or your lawyer hire a vocational evaluator. Secondly, you want to make sure that your medical records and the attending physician statement forms your doctor completes document your symptoms, how those symptoms interfere with the material and substantial duties of your occupation, and why, for example, you can only work part-time. Thirdly, I think you have to explain why personal activity isn't the same as your occupational duties and the price that you pay for those personal activities. Number four, you should document the side effects of the treatment and give examples of how the side effects may impact the material and substantial duties of your occupation. So, for example, in breast cancer cases, it's not uncommon to go through chemotherapy and radiation therapy. There can be serious side effects from the, that treatment, including fatigue, but you can see cases of tingling and numbness in people's fingers and hands. Now, if you're in the emergency room and you have difficulty using your hands, that can be a big problem. And lastly, you should get an affidavit from your oncologist about your immunological issues with supporting medical literature that uh, explains why you have these immunological issues and why uh, working in a particular uh, environment is inappropriate for you. All right, I hope you have learned the five reasons that disability carriers like Unum will use to justify a claims denial, and more importantly, the five lessons learned from this case. Let's take a break.